Welcome to The Ladder, a weekly dose of personal development ideas to help spark your imagination, increase your leadership skills, and bring more success into your life. And now, here's your host, James Ferris. Yes, one of my favorite songs from the 70s, Jane Weaver from probably 1975 or 1976. Oh, what's that? You say it's not Jane Weaver? Oh, 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 oh okay. I didn't realize that. You mean it's Dream Weaver? Well, you can certainly understand how I might think that that was Jane Weaver, right? It certainly sounds like he's saying Jane Weaver, and it sounds like by listening to the other lyrics that he's talking about a female named Jane Weaver, you could understand that, right? No? Oh my goodness. Well, I, I'm so sorry, you know. Listen, guys, I, I do this tongue-in-cheek, but when I was a child, that conversation actually took place in uh, a vehicle that I happened to be in with a close family member that will go nameless for this podcast today. Uh, unfortunately, the, I've cleaned it up a little bit. The, uh, there, was, there were no uh, profane words used or anything, but it was a little bit harsher than what I, I just role play with you on. And I remember hearing that song for the first time and thinking, wow, I really like this song. It's got a great rhythm, and it's got some cool little interludes and breaks, and the way that he introduces the song is really a kind of cutting edge, and I really liked it and, and thought, man, this is a great song. And so when it came on, I would go, oh, oh, there's, there's that song, Jane Weaver. And, and uh, this family member immediately corrected me and said, no, 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 that's not, that's not what they're saying. It's Dream Weaver. And I was arguing back and saying, well, isn't he talking about a lady named Jane Weaver? No, no, no. And, and then I stopped and I thought, okay, so you're correct. But can't you at least understand how I might have come to that conclusion and thought, you know, put all these pieces together that, that he was saying Jane instead of Dream? And the answer was no, absolutely not. I don't. I don't understand how anybody could mis, or misconstrue that or confuse that with with Dreamweaver. It's it's pretty clear what the song is saying. And I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty harsh to to uh, not even have the ability to understand how somebody could make a mistake and mistake that uh, one word for another word. And I, I think this goes to show what is going on in probably your life and my life to some degree and it and it's definitely going on in our society you know we we don't have a lot of middle of the road it doesn't seem anyway I, we we do if we really pay attention to it we do but the the media the news media would have us believe that everybody is on sides taking sides and you know if you're not on that side you're against this side it's if you're not with me you're against me and this is a this is creating division in our country, and it it also can creates division in organizations much smaller than countries, such as organizations of employer employee, or student and teacher, or uh, an organization of friends, or an organization called a family. I think this same situation comes up far too often, and what we have to learn to do if we're going to be more successful in our organizations is to try and be understanding try to understand where somebody else is coming from and why they may have the opinion or thought that they do at that moment about whatever it is the subject matter is so as a a, a very general example think about uh, how other religions and, and parts of the world view the united states you know what are some of the things they they, they talk to or, or call us you know so I've heard the evil empire is we've been called the evil empire and we've been called infidels and and other really derogatory things like that which are are painful to hear especially if you hear it from somebody and then then you feel like wow they're talking about me but stop to think for a moment why why would they say or think that about us do, is there any do we give them any cause to say and think those things about us my personal opinion is there are elements of our society that absolutely do give them cause to think that about us and do those things or, or, or come to those opinions about us and, and talk badly about us as a nation. I don't agree with it, but I certainly understand why it is that they would think that they think that because we have in our, our social norms have gone way downhill ever since I was a kid. They've gone way downhill and probably started the, even even before I was born. 
but they've really gone downhill. I mean, when I was a kid, we didn't see people walking into uh, stores and restaurants dressed in their pajamas, by the way. I mean, that's, that's an example of what I'm talking about. The saggy pants thing didn't exist when I was a kid. And, you know, if you were to walk around like that in Middle Eastern countries, for example, I mean, that would be... you. you you could get killed, I suppose, in, in certain areas for dressing like that or, or talking in certain ways and behaving certain ways. So I don't agree with those statements and thoughts, but I do understand how they could come to that conclusion about our society. Because there is a lot about our society that can be improved upon. So that's just a very, very simple, broad example of what I'm talking about here today is, is, is developing an understanding of other people's perspectives and opinions and thought processes and their priorities. What, other, what one person feels is important, another person may feel is totally unimportant. Um, you know, that's, that's another part of our society that, that we could really, you know, have conversations on for, forever. Uh, you see it in political discussions and religious discussions and, and financial discussions in virtually every other every area. So my question to you is, is are you having situations like this in your, your organizations, your family and friends? When you get together with family, do you have a different opinion than your family does about things? And do you openly discuss these things with the purpose of understanding the other person or with the purpose of trying to change their opinion? See, it's not necessary that we change others' opinion. It's, it's better off that we try to understand their opinion. And if we are truly right about what it is that we're, we're opining on, uh, maybe that person will, if, they're, if they lower their guard a little bit and don't feel like we're attacking them, maybe they will come to see some of what it is that we're bringing to the table with our side of the opinion. And we can learn to you know, politely disagree. Can be disagree. We can disagree without being disagreeable. And this is uh, the, the whole idea for today's podcast, is learning just, just to basically understand other people. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you grew up in a very wholesome family, then you're going to have a different paradigm on, on what's important in life and, and a whole, whole different idea of what life is all about versus somebody who grew up homeless, for example, or grew up in a very, very poor uh, upbringing with, with one parent or even no parents. They're going to have a different understanding of life. And when you get together and share opinions, uh, if that ever happens, you know, there's going to be possibly some sparks flying because one side doesn't under understand the other side. And this is what creates wars and it creates fights. And we have to learn how to at least understand other people's perspectives, understand why somebody might think the way that they do or do some of the things that they do. I, always, I often talk about uh, road rage. I, if, if, you know, if it was a, uh, anyway, I, I won't even go into that. I'll just say this. I don't condone road rage, but I can understand why some people might be driven to the point where they, they get upset enough to act uh, accordingly under those circumstances because sometimes people push our buttons and, you know, you, you've probably been in traffic where there's been just that one Yahoo out there that, you know, gets behind you, tailgates you, honks at you and, you know, tells you you're number one and then pulls out in front of you and tries to make the rest of your trip miserable. And I've been in situations like that. And it, it's easy to lose track of, of uh, you know, your, your rational thinking and, and get drawn into that and do something stupid. Fortunately for me, I've never gotten to that point where anything's physical happened. There's been times where I've wanted to do something, but fortunately for me, I've never acted upon it. And maybe you're like that as well. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, an example might be that, that uh, somebody comes up, you know, flips me the bird and pulls in front of me and they're giving me the finger and things like that. And I don't realize that I, that I did anything wrong whatsoever. And I'm, I'm, a lot of times my wife is with me and I'm like, uh, did I do something wrong? And she's like, I don't, I, nothing I could see you did. But maybe a, a block or two back, I, when I pulled out, I didn't see that person off to the side. And I cut in front of them somehow, in, uh, uh, not, not on purpose. And so I try to understand it from their perspective and say, okay, what are they so upset about? Perhaps I did something wrong back there. I didn't mean to do it on purpose. However, I understand why this person's upset with me because if I were them and they did that to me, totally uh, un un unaware of it or whatever, I might be upset a little bit as well. And so we, we try to understand the other person. You know, just this morning I was riding my bicycle and of course I'm riding on a bicycle path that has some cross sections where people come out of their, their neighborhoods and, and try to get into traffic. And oftentimes they're, they're only looking at the oncoming traffic and they're not paying attention to 
the oncoming traffic that might be coming down the bike trail and so in this case that's me so I have to look out for them and one of them one of them happened this morning where there was a lady and it looked like she was taking her daughter to school and she was looking at the oncoming traffic and she pulled past the white lines where where I had the right of way to cross and I could see that she wasn't looking and her daughter didn't seem like she was going to say anything to mom so as I started to cross she started she I saw her hit the gas and come forward so I stopped my bike and went around back or as I started to go around back, she you know, whipped her head around and saw me there and didn't apologize for it. And I just, I waved her on like, go ahead and go. It's going to take you a lot less time than it will for me. And I went around the back and, and I could see that she was embarrassed by it. So I, I get that was at that moment, we both understood each other. I understood where she was coming from because I've been her before on, on the, the road, pulling out and not seeing a bicyclist or a pedestrian. And then when I did finally turn feeling, whoa, you know, I, I really... Uh, shouldn't have done that or, or should have waited or what looked a little longer but it happened so fast and I didn't mean to do it so when it happened to her instead of me doing like other people would do and you know raise cane and and you know shake my fist at her and scowl at her and things like that I, I actually smiled at her made eye contact and waved her on and you know she felt the pain of that she understood she's been like that before so what will probably happen in the future is she will re remember that and at least once in a while she'll probably look both directions now because she just never knows how where this uh, where a bicyclist or a pedestrian is going to suddenly appear when they least expect it so this is what i'm what i'm kind of talking to you about through stories here but it happens i think in relationships it happens between brothers and sisters you know one brother did this uh, brother or sister did this particular activity or act took this action and the other sibling you know got upset about it but they should at least maybe try to understand why that other sibling did what they did under the circumstances i think if we did that we'd have a lot less fighting and arguing and I know in the, on the bigger, the bigger stage, we would have a lot less wars. Uh, you know, we, we need to learn how to stop making things black and white and put, put our perspectives more in between in the middle and say, okay, you have a point with what you're saying, what you're thinking. I, I totally get where you're coming from. However, here's my point. Let's meet somewhere in the middle and let's, let's uh, work something out. That's, that's very important. We do that in business all the time and we do that in families all the time as well so an, an example in a par from a parenting perspective might be that the child you tell the child to do something and your child says why and you say because i said so well at that point the child's not understanding anything except for they have to do what you said to do and not question you uh, and and maybe there isn't supposed to be any questioning however from a parenting perspective wouldn't it be a good idea to kind of explain our thought processes as to why our child is not allowed or permitted to do whatever that was that we, we told them so that it's educating them so on the next uh, opportunity where they have to have some similar situation they now have a little bit better education about whether or not they should even think about this as an option and then when they get to be older and have their own kids they're going to have a better i believe i believe anyway they're going to have a better ability to parent because now they have just not just the the answer of of uh, no you can't do it but here's the reasons why we don't do this and this is for safety reasons and i know you're only three or four years old and you don't quite understand this yet but trust me you're going to understand when you get older and here are the reasons why this is not safe and and you go into a, a little bit of an explanation of it now maybe not doing that every single time we don't want the child questioning everything that we do but once in a while it's good to do that uh, when it comes to employer and employee relationships same thing applies uh, the employer might say to the employee you have to do a b and c and uh, the employee says okay i'll do a and c uh, but I don't really want to do B. And the employer says, well, if you want your job, you have to do B as well. Again, that's, that's not going to inspire a lot of loyalty and trust on the part of the employee then, because the employee is now being asked to do something that they don't understand the reasons why. So the employer might may have a whole different understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I think, and, and we do this ourselves as employers, to help the employee understand the reasoning behind those decisions and why we wouldn't do it like this, why we would do it like this. Because we've been doing this for a very long time. We've, we've realized that doing it this way yields us these results and here's the problems that, that arise by doing it this way. So please you know, uh, respect the fact that we've been doing this a little longer than you have and we've seen the, the results on both sides. And so please, please respect that and, and support this particular uh, policy we have in place because it's going to be beneficial not just for the company but for you as well and that's that's going to be a little bit of a healthier thing than just saying I'm your boss if you want to keep your job do what I say 
right? So anyway, that's that's what we want to try to understand. And then from the employer's perspe perspective, we need to understand from the employee's perspective why they may be a little hesitant about A, B, and C or, or just B. Why would they be hesitant about that? What is it we need to explain to them to get them to understand why it's in everyone's best interest that they do this particular or follow this particular policy or procedure versus question it and try to row against the, the, the tide, right? Or row against the whatever. So uh, a lot, I see a lot of companies uh, suffering through this and a lot of organizations suffering through it as well, where, you know, the, the owners are rowing the boat in one direction and the employees are trying to row it in the totally the opposite direction. And they're, they end up turning circles versus making progress. So if you, if you stop to think about this principle of trying to understand the other person, there's an old cliche that, uh, that says something along the lines of don't judge me until you've walked a mile in my shoes. Uh, I think that goes both ways. And so as, a, as from a parent to a child or a child to a parent, you know, a child doesn't have a, uh, any children yet. So they have to trust that the parents have had experiences and, and wisdom and understanding and the fact that they're older that, than they do. And they may, they may see things differently and may see some things that a three, four, five-year-old kid or even a 15-year-old child can't see yet. And they need to understand that the parents are a little wiser than they may give them credit for and, and try to understand it from their perspective and at the same time parents should probably try to understand things from their child's perspective as well uh, employer to employee uh, spouse to spouse husband to wife wife to husband uh, brother to sister sister to brother and so on and so forth organizations are organizations so in order to experience more success we need to be a little bit more understanding so i hope you enjoyed today's podcast if you have any input or or additional thoughts on this i'd love to know what your thoughts are on it and i'll talk to you next week so until then this is james theris saying work on being more understanding of other people